Welcome to the 21st beginning Java tutorial. Today we're going to discuss variable scope within methods. And this is a relatively easy concept to understand, so this shouldn't be a long tutorial. Now, when you create a variable or an object inside a method, it is usable only inside that method. And that is what variable scope is. The scope is the block in which a variable exists in a program. It's that simple. And so all of the variables and objects that you create inside that method will only be available to that method. If you want them to be available to other methods, you have to define them outside of the method in the class itself. And that's pretty much the way we've been doing things, actually. We've been defining most of our variables outside the method, inside the class itself, so it's available to all the rest of the methods. Now these brackets right here is where the variable scope is set. Everything within these brackets in this method are local to this method only. So if we define a variable in here, it's accessible only to everything inside this method. That's why it's called a local variable. And as I mentioned, if we put the variable outside of it, it becomes available to all the rest of the methods. So everything inside this method is considered to be out of scope. It's unreachable. Every variable or object defined outside of this method is considered to be in scope. It's available to any other methods that we create. So let's do an example now. So let's declare an int variable, and we'll call it number, and we'll give it a value, and we'll do some comments here. This is a local variable, and we are declaring it and initializing it. If you will remember in the last video that we did, we said that a variable does not get initialized until you assign it a value. So that's what we did here. We declared it and gave it a value. And this is a local variable again because it's contained within this methods block. So no other methods will be able to reach it. Okay, so now let's go ahead and do a system out.print and we'll just print out the variable name. Now you can see it can reach it right here. It's available. You'll also know that this isn't in green. That's because it's not available to any of the rest of the methods. So everything's reachable within this block, this method. Now let's go ahead and create another method and try to reach this variable. And you'll see what happens here in a second. So we'll do a static void and we'll call this method get number. And we'll do another system.out.print number. And you can see we get some IntelliSense here indicating there's a problem with the variable scope. It can't reach it because it's inside this method. So let's go ahead and comment this out now. And we will copy and paste this outside the method. And remember, we have to use the static keyword here to make this available to all the rest of the methods. And now you can see, look, this can reach it. And you also notice this changed to green because now it's a global variable and it's available to all the rest of the methods. Now, I will point out that we did this example with static methods and static variables. You'll remember that in the previous video, we said that when you do static methods, you have to use static variables. But we could also define a object variable here, and it's the same concept. It would be available to all the rest of the methods. So it's the same concept, again, for object variables. We just use static variables for this example on variable scope. So that's pretty much it. It's pretty easy to understand. I will see you guys in the next Java tutorial.